So hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about for each method in Java 8. So again we are seeing all the new features in Java 8, so we have done with the default method in uh, interface. Uh, so in this video we'll see how to use for each method. Now why we even require for each method? For that let's discuss one thing. So let's say we have a list of values here and then we have 5 values which is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and I want to print all these values. So there are multiple ways to print these values, right? We can fetch, we can, we can fetch each element at a time using uh, values.get and we can provide the index number. So we can specify index number as zero, you will get four, index number one, we will get five. So depending upon index number, you will get the values, right? The other way is you can use for loop. So we can use uh, normal for loop. We can say i equal to zero, i less than equal to uh, the size of the list. So we can say less than. Uh, values dot size and then i plus plus and then we can print in this way we can simply say uh, values dot get and we can pass i right and if I run this code let me run this code now so you can see we got the oh, hold on. we got the output as four five six seven eight right so that's one way the other way is let me just comment this part so the other way is uh, in Java one point I don't know um, in the in the previous versions of Java we had one more way which is called as enhanced for loop using which you just need to mention the variable name and uh, you have to mention the at least name which is values here so this i will fetch values from the values of course and then it will print so it will print in this way if i just print i and if i run this code you'll be getting the same output right that is that is enhanced for loop which was there in java earlier but in Java 1.8, we have something called as for each method. Uh, so why we require for each method is because when you talk about the fetching the value from the at least, we do it with loops, right? We use these two types of loops basically. Now this type of loops are called as external, external loops. It's because this loop is outside the collection and then from outside we are fetching the value, right? So we, it's, it's something like you have uh, you have a box of values and then you're putting your hand inside the box and then you're fetching the values that's how that's why it is called as external for loops or external loops in java 1.8 we have something called as internal loops so we in java 1.8 we have internal loops <coughs> so this is only in java h uh, so how it works we can simply say we have values dot for each we can specify the value i and then we can say sys out i hope it works okay sys out and then we can pass i okay and if i run this code you can see we got the same output again how it works that doesn't matter okay time being it doesn't matter how it works the the thing is you are getting the output right so somewhere you're getting you're fetching all the values from the values collection and then you're trying to print it right now the advantage of using for each since this is the internal part of collection so for each is the internal part of collection so it will be much faster than the external for loops so let's say if you're working on huge amount of data if you're working with huge amount of huge collection of data to process all those data or to fetch all those data instead of working with external for loops we can work with internal for loop which is for each loop or for each method here Sounds good, right? Now this thing again is new feature in Java, which is Lambda expression. So how this part works, that we'll discuss in the next video. Time being, just remember, we have something called as for each method, which is, which is used for internal iterations. And this part here, which is the internal part of for each, that we'll discuss in the next video. So stay tuned and do subscribe for further videos.